Hello, Internet. I'm Amster Bomb. And I'm Matt. And you guys are back for another episode of Hitbox, the gaming show where we talk about all sorts of video gamey stuff. And this is just a, I guess, a generic, easy, low hanging fruit fodder of a topic that we both clearly would want to talk about some of our favorite gaming franchises. And um, Matt and I have spent some time thinking of what exactly makes uh, something our favorite franchise and uh, why we would put it on a list like this. Um, and Matt, I don't want to speak uh, just for myself when I say this, but I feel like some of my favorite video games might not necessarily be some of my favorite franchises and vice versa. Um, I don't know. Did you take that into account? Yeah, some things. Okay, cool. Uh, because I was definitely feeling like uh, some of the franchises that I love, um, I might have been playing for a really long time or just really cared about uh, the way that the franchise was. Um, but there's not like one game that I really think is like the absolute pinnacle of that or the best or something that I really, really love. They all that those are like the five we're going to talk about. I have five and Matt has five and I believe none of them are the same series. So um, we're going to have a discussion where we try and go over all 10 of these great franchises. Uh, but at least I had some honorable mentions. Matt, I don't know if you were thinking of some that you were like, I kind of wish I could squeeze that in, but you didn't. No, I mean, we got some that will, that I tried to avoid the ones we agree on. So like Monster Hunter and stuff like that. So it's like one of those, I'm, I'm just going to avoid this. You know, what's funny. Um, Monster Hunter is not one of my five. <laughs> Now, it, it might have been at one point when I gave it to you, but honestly, I, I kept... And this is for my number five slot, if we're going to get started. I kept swapping this one out so much, because I love so many gaming franchises. But Monster Hunter was one that I was like, I really love it. But thinking of just the franchise, like, it's okay. You know, it's alright. Like, I'm thinking of, like, just the character designs, the creatures, the monsters. I really do like it all. But, obviously I do. But I wouldn't say it's in my top five. That's really hard to get to. There's there's a lot that goes into that. And um, just to blow through some of my other honorable mentions, like I love Legend of Zelda, uh, No More Heroes. Like I, I love just being in the world of some of these games, like Uncharted, uh, Bioshock. Uh, and then there's other ones where I just really love the franchise where I will probably want to jump on any new stuff that they make, like To the Moon. Um, and then there's ones that have been with me for a very long time, like Pokemon. But not in my list. Not in them top five. Um, so... I guess we're kind of already starting this, and Matt, you might be curious of why I changed my list slightly uh, before I, before, uh, like, about a week ago, we were discussing these, and I believe Monster Hunter was my number five uh, at that point, and now I'm it... looking back at our messages to see if I can find... <laughs> he wants to prove it. that I, I said it was Monster Hunter. And honestly, I, I decided that I feel like I'm doing a disservice to something else that was an honorable mention in my list, and that is kind of a curveball, and it is Super Mario Brothers. I love the idea of this franchise. It's so weird. It's colorful. It's also very all ages, and it's, like, silly. It can be funny. It's, like... A, a game that makes you happy to play. It does! It it's just like makes me... It's like an antidepressant. It just makes me happy. Like, and that, I feel like, I, I thought, you know... I really need to keep that in my top five, even though I feel like I wouldn't say, like, there is one Mario game that is, like, above the others and is so spectacular, though, honestly, there are some great Mario games. Um, the new Bowser's Fury is fun. It is, man! And you know what's even you know what's even better? I have the Bowser Amiibo, and if you use that thing, it summons the giant Bowser at, at any point, and you could keep spamming it. It's... <laughs> you don't play the game unnecessarily on hard mode. It is so much fun with a Bowser amiibo. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's there's so much, and I really I really do love it. And honestly, um, it's something that also is really important to me, just like growing up with games, because it was the very first video game I ever played. Um, and loving how bizarre it all was, and just accepting the strange. Something about that just feels right in Mario, and I, th I think you actually described it better than I did. It just feels good to be there. Well, you it's know? like when you first got Odyssey for the first time. It's just such a fun game to play. Yeah, there's so much to say about Odyssey, and I feel kind of bad that I haven't gotten to make a playing with myself uh, review of Mario Odyssey yet. 
Uh, Kim, at the moment, um, I had to really push her to get started in playing Odyssey, and she recently did, and she loves it. She is, like, going through and now 100%ing the thing. She loves it so much. She takes, like, any break she can to play some more Mario Odyssey. Um, I was actually live-streaming before I did this episode, and Kim was bummed that she couldn't be playing Mario Odyssey while I was doing my live-stream, because I was taking the Switch. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a really, really well-designed game, but it's, like, I feel like it's the world that's fun to be in, and the Mario games traditionally have, like, great snappy controls that also, like, feels good to play, but, like, it's the, it's the color, I, I don't know if it's the colorfulness, the, 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 I don't want to say, like, it's just, like, a happy world, because sometimes it's silly and quirky and scary, but it's all just supposed to, because, like, there's even, like, that crazy dragon level in Odyssey, and you just don't question it, <laughs> um, it, it's just, I don't know, there's something very special about those games, and I really, really enjoy them. And, and I could go on for a very long time about any of these franchises, and for the sake of time, we can't do that. So, <laughs> I say, one thing that uh, probably, like, the best um, feeling in any of the Mario games I, I, I think I've ever had was when uh, you get to the point in Odyssey when you get to do the festival. And they, for the first time in the game, play Jump Up Superstar, which, like, the lyrics of is, like, such a wonderful homage of, like, the, the developers knowing and caring for this thing that they've worked on for so long. And it, it's almost like, like a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing of them saying, like, we had no idea this silly little thing would do so well, but look at what it is. This is amazing. It's like this, this big celebration for the silly plumber. And I just love it. Uh, so it's just such a happy series. It is such a happy series. It's I know it's such a weird Marty. thing for me to probably put on my list. You probably never expected that, but... I really, really do love Super Mario Brothers, and I don't want to discount that one. What's your next one? Oh, man, I figure we can we can alternate. Uh, oh, I would like to hear. How about your number five? Uh, my number five was hard, kind of a hard one, but I put the Resistance theory series from PlayStation on there. And Resistance one, two, and three, Fall of Man. Yes, um, and I actually um, had to look up more on this because I I know, like, the box art of the games. I have seen them around, but I have never gotten to play any of them myself. So I was very shocked to hear about this. So, uh, Matt, uh, tell us all about why Resistance is so awesome. One, I, just, I like the story in it. I love the characters. I love the guns. <laughs> the guns are fun. It was one of the games that came out and was... Didn't, I don't believe it was titled as a Halo killer because that was the whole thing back then was any new shooter that came out had to be called a yeah, Halo right. killer. Yeah, right. Everything was Halo. And, and people, and uh, I'll, I'll get into it later of like other series that, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll try and shelve it, of other series that I really love that people said the same thing about. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I'll admit the first two are weak, but the third one is so much fun. The third one can be scary sometimes. Like there's a, there's a, um, dark hotel level where you're running through a giant city and there's a giant chimera attacking and you're just trying to hide mm -hmm. it is so much fun and they're i think they're all three all three of them are on um, playstation now right now really that's really cool and you know i really like that you pointed out that um you don't particularly think that the first two were even like great games so that might even be a series that had I said, what are your top five favorite games? We probably wouldn't be hearing about this. It's just like, it sounds more like the world and this, like just the idea of what resistance is, is what you really like. Okay. Right. But yeah, it's, it's more of the, um, the world of it. I like the creativity behind it. Cause it didn't just feel like another halo killer, like blink or brink was it brink or blink. I, I think it was, I think it's brink. I think it was brink. You're thinking of, um, Oh, there was some other game that sounds like Blink, but yes, I know, I know what you mean. You can go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's all you heard when you heard Brink was, oh, it's a Halo killer. It's a Halo killer. And then it came out and it was garbage. Yeah. And you know what? Um, You reminded me of another game I was really excited about when it was coming out. And it's actually kind of similar to Resistance. Uh, do you remember The Conduit? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, for the Wii, um, there people, and me included, were so excited for the concept of like a real first person shooter um, outside of, like, Metroid Prime 3, that is going to be this, like, first-person shooting with the Wii Remote really taking advantage of those controls. And it was just so meh that <laughs> I even I don't, I don't pre-ordered that game. Good. The first one I like. It's the second one that... It's okay, yeah. Destroyed it's not the series, bad. Um, yeah, but, yeah, the conduit was... It's something that, like, I never really resonated with, like, the idea like, I don't know, the characters at all, um, 
eh, something about like the creature design was just kind of eh. none of it really got me though i was excited in pre-order you know before the game came out the hype season it, it was pretty exciting but uh yeah um something about it just never really stuck with me like that so yeah and, th and that's why i can put it at five because i can sit there and say these three games weren't great but i love going back and playing them and i could definitely understand that um so how about we move on to our fours okay so it's probably not much of a shock i really really love the world of the witcher and uh it was not hard to know that i was going to be putting this on my list it was hard figuring out where on my list that i was going to put this but uh yeah the witcher the world of it is just so so interesting and like it's it's dark and gritty but at the same time it's like feels like you're living in a light-hearted fairy tale but you're just dealing with like the grungy gross parts of it and and it, it just feels like there's real people here the writing and the the way that they craft this world feels like i just want to live here even though you are this this character who's looked down upon or taken advantage of there's something that's just so satisfying and great about being in the witcher um, in all three of the games that I've played, I have also read the books, so we're kind of blending things over here a little bit, but to be fair, the books are kind of different from the, uh, games, almost even kind of drastically, uh, to the extent, I would say the books are more fairy tale-y, just as dark and gritty mixed into there, but at the same time, it's, um, like, straight up taking, like, Beauty and the Beast or The Little Mermaid and kind of putting a Witcher twist on it, um, whereas the games are predominantly their own thing and really focusing on like their own characters and creatures that um were inspired from the books and created to build this whole hu huge world and uh, that's just it's just so fun to be in it even though i feel it's so weird because it's like the dead opposite of mario because you don't like Geralt would not feel good being in the world of the witcher um he's if anything, he, he, people would spit on his shoes as he turns the corners. Uh, he's just called a mutant, kicked out of bars, uh, not given somewhere to stay in the night, and just thrown some change to go kill some ghouls down the street. And while you do it, the, the real beauty of the games are finding out the story of why they were there and what you really need to do to stop it. And it's, usually it's like moral conundrums and trying to figure out the lesser of two evils is the big uh, famous lines that uh, I believe the uh, the Netflix series uh, kind of ran with. Um, I only watched the pilot episode of the Netflix show, by the way. I, I did, never really liked it too much just because I felt like it was kind of messing with the books a little too much and ruining the canon of what kind of needs to happen. That's a bigger discussion for another time, but still, um, The Witcher is just, God, I just want to dive right into that awful, awful place. <laughs> and and to think cyberpunk could have been that. Yeah, you know, um, definitely another conversation for later. But yeah, um, CD Projekt Red, I feel like had some uh, investor issues. And maybe maybe they just, like, got too big for their own good. But uh, to be honest, you know, th they were trying really hard on that to make it work. And make it something that it really couldn't be on uh, what were modern consoles at the time. So, well, like, we'll this is something we're, like... called, like, overhyped. Well, there's it's that. Like all um, these games like turned out like Duke Nukem, No Man's <laughs> Sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot. Of, I was actually gonna say um, another one, but I feel like I might spoil something in our list for later, so I don't want to do that. A couple things actually on both of our lists because uh, I already know unless you've made big changes to it. But but still. Um, now I believe you've played The Witcher as well, right? Um, I've played some of Witcher three. Okay, yeah, because I, I have played all of Witcher 1, 2, and 3, and both routes of Witcher 2. And I even played Witcher 3 a second time all the way through on Death March. And, uh, duh. <laughs> that's how much I hate myself. I hate myself that I love Witcher so much. Um, but yeah, it, it's not something for everybody. I, I originally, I remember when it was coming out that I looked at it and I thought, it just looks kind of like the Fable world. Uh, like, I'd probably like that game a lot, but... You know, like, I'm playing other things at the time, or I didn't have, like, the system to play it, and, uh, wow, uh, three is, three is phenomenal. Okay, so, Matt, what do you say is your number four? My number four is gonna be Persona. Ooh, yeah. And it's, it's low on this list, it is, 
I love the series a lot. It's still your fourth favorite franchise. Like, that's saying so much, though. Oh, it is. I, I love the games. I love the stories. I love the fact that if you just want the story, you can play on easy and get mm -hmm. everything. Safe, yeah, if yeah. you hate yourself, you can go on hard <laughs> like I do. Where every single day matters, like life or every death. Every day matters. <laughs> uh, you know, what's really funny is um, we played uh, some Persona 3 on the channel, and that... Like, it's because of lots of technical difficulties, it didn't do very well, and we ended up abandoning it, um, which I think is so far the only abandoned series I have on my channel. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. And um, it's, a, it's such a shame, because when I got a chance later, uh, I believe a couple years after that, you lent me uh, Persona 5. Um, man, that game is amazing! <laughs> It's but so I, I, good. That's what I love between each game is it has the same core concept, but each game has so many new things. Yeah, they're all very different. I mo I know a lot about um, 5, 4, and 3. I know very little about 2 in the original. And uh, Shin Megami Tensei also. Um, which, have you played any of these Shin Megami Tenseis? Some, but just like I was I was talking to Claire yesterday when mm -hmm. we were at well, dinner, and they're not some of my favorites. Really? Okay, so uh, from what I understand, and just in case the uh, audience is not fully like uh, hip on the Shin Megami Tensei, because it is a lesser-known series, even though Persona is a spin-off of it, um, let, let us kind of know uh, like, what you thought of that uh, differential there, the two games series. I like it. It's just sometimes Shin Megami can go a lot darker than Persona. Like, Persona can get dark. But it's like, do you want to play the one that has a bit more lightheartedness and fun jokes, or do you want to be depressed? <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know what's funny is uh, the first one we played together was uh, Persona 3, and that one, I actually was really turned off of it because of how much of a downer it was all the time. And three, like, 3 gets dark. 3 is one of the darker ones. Yeah, and like to summon your Persona, you have to like accept death and shoot yourself in the head with this like imaginary weird gun thing that like blasts your persona out like it's like it's so emo but like you take the same like you said the same core idea and you could twist that around to like the crazy like groovy world of what they did with uh four and like how that was their sequel and then you take that to like the the crazy stylish world of five and they're like yeah this is normal this is natural and like that i gotta agree i really love how open they are to totally taking this idea and doing whatever they want with it atlas has done very little to make me not trust them yeah have you played um i don't want to get too off topic here but have you played Catherine? yes that is a great game too <laughs> they they made a lot of great stuff but i also really love their animation Oh, but their animations are good, but I still stand by Persona 5 animation does not need to exist. Oh, you mean like the anime? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I did watch that all the way through, by the way. Um, it doesn't need to exist. No, I, I felt like they were going to make like an OVA to, I don't want to spoil the ending of Persona 5, so I'm not going to go Persona there. Persona 5's been out for uh, over like two years now. Yeah, but to be fair, a lot of people like are introduced to it for the first time because Joker got into Smash Brothers, which is awesome, by the way. And um, they were probably like, ah, it's a long game. I'll put it on my list. And it's probably on a lot of people's backlogs. I, I don't that, want to spoil it. But still, the ending of, of the anime, basically, without spoiling it, goes to the bad ending of the video game. And the video game really does keep going from there substantially. Yeah, there's a lot of content after that. But the anime just stops. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Especially also, the animation Royal. quality is really Royal, poor. Goes yeah, compared to what Atlas does. Atlas's animations are just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. But anyway. Um, number three. Sorry? Yeah, number three. Um, so, you know what? My number three, I I feel like I wrote this one really quickly. Like, uh, this has to be on here. And um, the more I'm thinking of, like, the franchise itself, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I love these games a lot. And the franchise itself maybe could be different. But uh, three, I wrote Metal Gear Solid. There is probably no other franchise that I was sucked into faster and harder than oh that didn't sound great than metal gear solid and um that's probably just because of how well written and how well crafted these games are on an individual level which is why i'm kind of saying like i love the original metal gear solid i love metal gear solid 2 i love metal gear solid 3 but each one is a very different thing and i keep going i still like 
I still really, really like Metal Gear Solid 4, and I still really, really like Metal Gear Solid 5. But as a franchise, did I jump on Metal Gear Survive because I loved the world so much? No. God, no. You um, didn't like Survive? No. <laughs> Greatest uh, one in the entry. <laughs> was it now? And, and same deal for uh, the original MSX titles. Um, I also didn't jump on those. I, I really just kind of like wanted to know the gist of the story, what happened in those, just so I can enjoy the others, because I enjoy those individual games so much, because each one is so different. So um, this is feels like a weird asterisk. How do you define a franchise? I love almost like the series of what... The, the saga of what Metal Gear Solid is. And it's so interesting with its interconnected uh, stories and characters. They're all so interesting and unique. Uh, the way that it all integrates with the gameplay. It, it's great. Um, and, and honestly, like, the way... I think my favorite part of how, um, especially the original, um, told its story. It felt almost like the core, core story was in cutscenes and with uh, dialect codec calls that dialog codec calls that you would have to listen to. But the actual gameplay really felt like it was at its best when you are sneaking around the facilities and you kind of think like, oh, I want to call this person. I don't know how to do this. And you get all these different calls and information and the story builds its characters around those extra calls. And that's the world building and uh, the franchise, the series that I really loved out of it so much because it, it all felt so real, but like just strange and supernatural enough to like keep you going like, whoa, but what's happening? And like, you know, the crazy plot twists and, and all the like, and it gets really in depth with like uh, uh, nuclear um, bombardments and threats and uh, standoffs and it, it gets intense. Um, and there's like great messages even at the end of each of the metal gear solid games uh, well except for the one that doesn't stop uh, <laughs> or never had a true ending rather uh metal gear 5 which you know, we'll get to that at one point but still it's something that i thought was like so good and honestly if konami even without kojima decided to make a ah, god this is making me really struggle to say this uh, even a remake of the original metal gear solid for proper hardware or a metal gear solid six and honestly the trailers really look like they are doing what i was just saying well i don't feel like kojima needs to be that integral to what metal gear solid is a lot of people go into making video games and it's not just one person even though you know a director is obviously a huge role um but still i that's kind of how I, I feel about that how, how many of the metal gear games have you played matt uh technically not any of them. I played some of each one, but mm -hmm. I never really had full power to get into them. It's it's definitely something that you'd have to resonate with and like really keep going because it's one of those games where it's like the story will suck you in if you let it. And the more you let it do that, the more invested you'll get and the farther along you will get and you'll get crazier plot twists and stuff and it'll keep going and going and it, and it compounds on itself. And that's what's so interesting, I think, throughout the series. It kind of compounds on itself, which... Say if you jumped into Metal Gear Solid 4 and it was your first one, you would think it was absurd. Completely absurd and just stop. Um, so it's it's definitely, yeah, um, a tricky one to jump into. But anyway, how do you, uh, what's your uh, number three? Uh, my number three, I'm going to take everyone back in time when EA wasn't a terrible company. <laughs> Where they actually put good games out and quality games. I, I, I remember, yeah. They had a lot of uh, interesting licenses, like, way back in the day when... You ever... Look, geez, just the, the day of when, to buy a video game, you were actually buying, like, a, a CD, a computer disc, that you put into your CD drive of your computer back when you actually had that, and then you had to install it, and then you had to play it from the disc, and... Man. And have DLCs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, my, my number three would go to the Time Splitter series. Oh. Because they are just so quirky, they're fun, and it takes a lot for me to like an FPS like mm -hmm. Resistance. Because I hate COD. I hate COD. So That's much. really funny. Then that you have two of them on your list so far. Because they're funny. Like the mm -hmm. Resistance isn't funny, but it's unique. But Time Splitters is hilarious. Like yes, three I can play through multiple times and still laugh at the stupid jokes. 
And I don't know if that just speaks to my low-level intelligence or the fact that I just love Cortez as a character so much. Cortez is great. Uh, There's so many characters in Time Splitters. Now, uh, I've I've only played three with you on the channel, by the way. Shameless plug. And aside from us having a lot of technical difficulties again, we both loved that game so much. I don't know how many times you had even played it before we played it together. Um, and then when we played it together, I think we even had to replay a lot of it together to even get missing episode chunks. And even those chunks messed up, just to attest, like, how much we both really loved it. Like, it didn't matter that we had to play it all over again, because it was just... Like, the gameplay is fun, but the world, I think, is what sells it, of Time Splitters just being hysterical. Oh, the world is... The, the world and the characters are the best part. Like, I love every partner you come across. I like how one minute you can be in a zombie mansion and the next minute fighting in a robot apocalypse. With like a crazy hippie man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or like you're running on a train all of a sudden. It's, it's just boom, boom. Every single level. They're like, whatever random thing is going to happen next. And they're just like rolling with it. I know uh, there's been a lot of radio silence on this, but uh, I believe, uh, didn't it just get the, the license, just get purchased by THQ Nordic a few years ago? I think so, but we haven't heard anything on it. Like, I'm hoping they're going to do something with it, because I love the series, and I'm glad EA doesn't touch it anymore. Yeah. Because you know EA would just destroy it. Nowadays, absolutely. Especially with how many, like, I'm just thinking, for example, of, like, the multiplayer. Uh, how many different characters you could play as, and how many potential skins and things that you would have to purchase, or, like, randomly open with loot boxes. There were so many skins in 3. Yeah, there I were so many skins. I know, you run around as, like, a, a T-Rex and, like, a zombie <laughs> monkey, and... Uh, the creepy clowns and oh god everything um you know i feel like um it's really hard to even describe time because time splitters is such an i would say a very underrated uh franchise and um people probably would have to oh i'm trying to condense it so they would understand it and get a good grasp of it well, i would say it might like be like this. imagine doctor Hu- doctor who but with way more toilet humor and stuff that would be totally not okay to joke about, like, in 2021. It's a bunch of, like, racy uh, jokes that... <laughs> well, that's what made it perfect. That's like it knew what it was. It's it a product of its time, it. for sure. Yeah. Well, it makes me scared so that uh, modern... It's like you could do map creation on there. You yeah. You could build your own maps. and had cat racing, which was fun. <laughs> and monkey curling. <laughs> monkey curling. <laughs> I loved monkey curling. That was so dumb. I remember like how intense we got with monkey curling too. It was hard. It's like I did. I, yeah, it was. And I also didn't really even care so much that the video, like the audio, we are peaking so bad in it. But it's because we're screaming. We're having so much fun with it. I feel like your your family must have been so mad at us because I was getting so into monkey curling. And I remember one, one time, things. one time we got a bullseye. I lost my mind i was so excited like i didn't even care that that video messed up because i had so much fun filming that well one of these days we'll just have to do a stream where we just do monkey curling and cat racing <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that that is why i love it so much because yeah it is a perfect this is this game nothing else is like it it, it definitely is there's nothing else like time splitters and it's really a shame because i feel like there's a lot of things today that are tr- trying to do something like that like be the first person or even third person shooting a uh, comedy jokey kind of thing but i feel like they can't really accomplish it in this modern age without being too fortnighty um because before it's all like you know like you were saying before like making the jokes about halo or something like are you trying to be halo uh but this is time splitters was so its own thing it didn't even matter but now it's like everything's like are you trying to be fortnite and um fortnite is trying to do that uh jokey humory kind of thing but, um, but there's no good humor like toilet humor. no good humor like toilet humor and honestly that's why like i did see someone say oh it's like fortnite it's like no no, no it's not you uneducated no. plebe <laughs> yeah it's nothing like fortnite it is its own special zone it is a very special special place yeah there's just nothing really like time splitters so i, I think we should uh move on to number two and now that we're getting this close, this is, like, where we're getting to the point where you're kind of deciding what's going to be number one. You know, and you're kind of pushing stuff back. Though, I don't know about you, Matt, but it was not hard for me to pick number one. No, it wasn't hard for me either. Okay, and people listening to this who know me probably 
already know what my number one is, and it's not gonna be a shock to anybody. But my number two, I thought this was um, still counting as a series, as a franchise, and uh, for that I have to say, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, that's a series. It, it is a series. It's it's a franchise. Don't don't get on me and say like, ah, it's no, just it is. A- like there's no there's no getting around it. It is a series and a franchise. It's kind of become its own thing nowadays um and of course back in the day even even back on the n64 i remember playing this as a kid and going like i just love the idea so much that mario gets to punch link in the face or like samus gets to like shoot him like shoot a little energy beam shot at donkey kong and you get to see like who actually wins in a fight or pikachu gets to like you know like electrocute and jump all over the air and like Kirby can suck him in and get little Pikachu ears. Like, that was so, like, mind-blowing back then that that, like, preciousness is still stuck with me so much that, um, yes, I really enjoy, really enjoy the game itself and, of course, like, the, the uh, series staples that it has developed over time that are its own things, kind of like uh, Master Hand or, like, the classic modes, um, all of that stuff. I really love it, and it's it's gameplay. Uh, it, it's j- really, at heart, it's just a fun party game, and the party game itself is really fun and innovative. Like, no other fighters at that point, I don't think any others at that point, were trying to do anything where the goal was to basically King of the Hill push people off the edge. It was all deplete... Uh, stamina to zero and th- that's just so interesting you know to to stick with something like that and do something so risky and have it work out and then of course compounding it with the fact that you have all of these nintendo series together was just incredible and then of course nowadays oh my gosh every single smash reveal is like the event of the year you know it's like the big thing um, now, of course, we're looking at, like, big DLC fighters, like, who's gonna join Smash Brothers? It's just so exciting, um, and it's such a big thing. It's almost like a big welcoming party, and it's something that I feel like is so special because I have been playing it for so long, and I've loved it so much that it would be unfair for me to not include it on this list, even though it is a collection of other franchises. I want to specify that it's actually Super Smash Brothers itself, that series that I really love and um, I really want to dig into. Uh, just whenever they release new stuff, I'm, I'm all over it. Um, I just want to, you know, just I just want to play everyone. I want to play with every single character. I want to, like, mess around and do all sorts of crazy stuff. And and what I really loved is, like, a kid, like, in, in even in, especially in high school with, like, Melee, uh, I would just, like, play different scenarios. Like, Link has to defeat Bowser as Bowser invades, like, the Hyrule Castle temple. And... Uh, well, it's technically the temple from Zelda 2. So let's not get too mixed up. But, but still, like, I make all those crazy scenarios and, God, it, it's so much fun. And there's so much potential with Ultimate. So much it's staggering. It's almost like you can't even look at it and, and figure out this stuff. And fortunately, Spirits, that new idea to make, like, events their own thing intertwined with the old idea of trophies to also save time on devs. It's, it, it's, all, it's all brilliant. I just find it so amazing that we can even like get all that music all the rights to those characters the stages there's so much there that it really is leaning on nostalgia i know but it works for me (laughs) okay it works for me those are the buttons that i need pushed some days i just need to sit down and boot up smash brothers because it just makes me happy yep and that's all you had to say about super smash brothers (laughs) Oh, yep. no, Super, Super Smash Brothers is just, it's a good series. Like, it's the perfect party game where anyone can play it because you can either play just chill or you can go hardcore. Yes, yeah, and, and that's really impressive, like, how intense the competitive scene has gotten with Super Smash Brothers. I didn't even realize how good you could get at that game until I really started watching some people really get some crazy stuff done like i knew you could do it in melee for the longest time because melee is so fast but man watching people pull some crazy stuff off in ultimate i'm really glad that melee isn't like the big one that people are playing competitive now ultimate is really taking off and it's doing so great i'm, I'm so happy to see that you know a new smash brothers game can kind of replace an old one because for competitives and uh the casual alike and it makes me feel um really really happy to see and also god god how could we get through all this without saying like that roster like have you taken a look at that character select screen recently 
and the like that if you went back to 1990 something people would say it was fake exactly you, you look at this and you're like this is so not real there's a piranha plant on it for god's sakes the sephiroth is on it are, are you kidding me like it looks so fake like why would they put in i don't know sephiroth over any other final fantasy character any one making a fake uh you know, menu would have clearly known that you would obviously put Terra or uh, Yuna um, or, or or Lightning um, or who who was new at the time. I don't know. But just some big <laughs> Final Fantasy. Anybody, anything else. Or like put Chrono there. You know, other Square Enix refs. Put Gino there. Gino's not on it. It, it. There's so much. I don't know. It looks so fake. But I love it. <laughs> I love it. Because they know how to have fun. It's a they party do. game. Yes. It's, it's just fun. It's just fun. So speaking of fun, Matt... What is your second favorite franchise? I will tell you in just a minute. Do me a favor mm -hmm. and check your phone. Okay. I sent you something and I wanted to bring this up in Time Splitters. Okay. And I just want you to play the first five seconds and tell me if you know what this is. <laughs> you remember this song. This what? is what plays during the monkey curling. So I thought the entire so. Time, you're I remember. I was gonna say it. This was the crazy, boppity music that plays during monkey curling. What did that have to do with? <laughs> Nothing. It's just repeated over and over. All the song is it just goes like a monkey. Don't, don't. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh, uh, I should have made ties winners my two because my god, I love it. Oh my god. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> we gotta go back and talk about time splitters again. <laughs> so We'll do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Yeah, we'll have to. Oh my god, so, time splitters. Yeah. So number two would be the Final Fantasy series. Yeah, weird that I was just kind of pointing out Final Fantasy so much in Smash Brothers because it's so... God, I can't believe that it got in there. And honestly, I don't even think we got to talk about Sephiroth, like, at all since it happened. Um, My god. But yeah, Final Fantasy, man. Sephiroth challenge is horrifying where it's... Uh, oh, it's you versus dude. seven level nine Sephiroths. <laughs> it's like people have found out the only way to do it is if you turn on team damage and they'll kill each other. It's oh the my only god, way you can do it. Really? That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Sephiroth, he's so much fun though. I love playing it with him in there. Um, you know, I don't. I, let's just as a little short teaser transition. Um, because you're a huge Final Fantasy fan, and honestly, I'm gonna call myself a new emerging Final Fantasy fan. Right now, you'll be very proud of me. I am playing through Final Fantasy VI for the first time, uh, oh, Final, which is best. Final Fantasy III in the West, and, um, I am playing it on the Game Boy Advance version. Um, I had also recently played Chrono Trigger, which is still in the same vein of that stuff. Uh, I also joined Kim with her playing all of Final Fantasy X, and then, of course, we played, uh, Seven Remake on my channel, but other than that, that's basically my... Final Fantasy, but like, how do how do you feel personally that they picked Sephiroth for Smash Brothers over you know uh, uh, Terra, for example? Like I said, from from six, I, I am all for it because he is the original anime swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I really loved it because one, I am just a sucker for villains. So you know, having Ridley, King K. Rule, you know, like all these like crazy villains are showing up. I'm like, oh my god, I love this and. Oh my god, Sephiroth. He is the video game villain. So, oh god, I was just so... And of course, the fact that he brought the music and the spirits and a new stage. Oh god, I loved it all. Loved it all. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Because part of the reason why I love Final Fantasy mm -hmm. is because of the music. Oh, that... Like, Nobuo I love Omatsu, the music correct? In all the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh man, that, that guy is a master. And he's been... How long has he been doing this, too? Oh god, I can't tell you. He, yeah, it's imp It's amazing. Because most of the time when you have artists like that, um, eventually they kind of lose their steam or like, you know, work on other projects because it's just, you know, not quite jiving with them. But then there's people like Shigeru Miyamoto who, you know, just like, why can they not do wrong? Now, occasionally they do stumble and do weird stuff. But man, Nobuo Matsu, that, like, that man's a genius. But like, like Final Fantasy was probably the first thing to get me into RPGs and everything. Because, <laughs> like, the first one I played was 10, and I sunk way too much time in 10. Oh my god, you need you would need to talk with Kim. She loves 10. But I just, I, sorry, I started laughing. I remembered something when you said, like, how much you loved it. I remember, we were in high school, and you had, and I'm not kidding, guys, Matt had a locked box. And inside this locked box that he took with him almost everywhere was his copy of Final Fantasy VII. 
Oh yeah, it's still in there. I thought it got upgraded. To my it's still in safe. there. <laughs> well, it's not in that box anymore. It's now in the fireproof safe. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, you know, in case of fire, I don't want this damage. Because I mean. Yeah, you can get it for like forty bucks, but it's still one of my favorites. Yeah, so or you I'm could play like uh, an eight dollar version of it on like the Switch or something, which we we encourage you to do. It's it's a it's an amazing game, and so is the remake, both for totally different reasons. But uh, honestly, I, hmm, what do you have? You I'm assuming you've played all of uh, Seven Remake. I have, but now I need to get it for PS Five. Yeah. Oh man, that Yuffie thing coming out. Yeah, I'm I'm getting excited about that too. Um. And weirdly, like, what are they tying into Dirge of Cerberus or something like that? No, kind of, no, not really. Dear, Dirge of Cerberus was a weird game. Yeah, it's one of those. I do. Yeah, Crisis I like Core it. is even really weird too. Crisis Core is weird too. But I'm one of those terrible people that like the bad games. Like, I love Final <laughs> Fantasy 13. I absolutely love it, even though it's probably one of the worst in the franchise. I don't know too much about it, other than I know that it was in the Brown era. Um, and like I've seen the gameplay, and I wasn't really diving into it but uh, granted when i saw it i wasn't big in final fantasy and of course right now maybe i've got like a retro game fix and i'm like oh i gotta play anything that came out of the super nintendo because the super nintendo could just do no wrong and uh, i gotta play uh final fantasy 6 but yeah 13 even bad one you know i i'm totally guilty of that same thing on my number one and i don't want to steal your final fantasy thunder so go ahead <laughs> Now that, that that's pretty much it for my Final Fantasy Thunder. My, my number one, I have way more passionate to, but yeah, you know my, what? Final Fantasy was my gateway drug for RPGs. I'll put it like that. Yeah, uh, you know what? Um, just to say it like that, another big contender that uh, did not make it on my list was Xenoblade, and that was probably now excluding Pokemon was probably my big gateway into fantasy RPGs. I never really resonated with Final Fantasy until later when I was older, but oh my goodness, Xenoblade. Xenoblade is like so different, so unique, and so creative, and I just loved the world and the story. Um, it's it's so great, and actually, is uh, in terms of the recording right now, is going to be my next Playing With Myself episode uh, that I make, so fun fact, now we know that. Unless, of course, it launched before uh, this video showed up, so in which case now I look stupid. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Um, my number one was so immediately my number one. Everything else was like, okay, yeah, I like that too. I really like that a lot. But my number one is definitely my number one. I know there's bad entries in it. I know there's there's problems. I don't care. This is one of mine. I will stand by forever. And that is Metroid. You're probably not surprised. I have a giant Metroid right here next to me as I am uh, recording. And I... Oh my goodness. Ever since I first um, started playing this series, I've just been like head first into it. And I really don't know what it is about Metroid that I love so much, but it's probably just a combination of, uh, it's like all the little things just being perfect for exactly what I want in a game. Um, for one, it's it's uh, very inspired by Alien, uh, which is one of my, if not my favorite movie. And it's just like so like dark and like brooding but at the same time it's got like color and like unique nintendo flair where it's like still kind of like a colorful the world just feels so alive and alien and you feel that isolation and dread to it and the world works perfectly with the gameplay which the gameplay in good metroid games i feel like is all about exploring and even back on the nes i can imagine people pitching the original nes metroid and them shooting it down like are you insane you can't make that how are you supposed to build an entire open world alien planet where the player can go wherever they want do whatever they want find stuff in whatever order and have the game still function are you crazy but it worked and it worked well and then they made metroid 2 and they found new creative ways to utilize this in super metroid and then of course they hit that inevitable hurdle what do we do when we do with this in 3d metroid prime it's like so good all of it is like so so satisfying and it's it's also a lot of that itch of like starting out and feeling really weak 
and alone and afraid in the game, but the more you play and the farther you get, one, you are getting better at the game. That is one. So you're going to be a little bit more skillful. But two, you're actually finding expansions to your missiles, your arsenal, your your gear, everything. You are getting stronger until eventually you get to the end of these games and you are an unstoppable force. And it feels so good getting to that point. And, and then, of course, there's, like, the replay value of, like, the, they add so much more to this of, like, speed running in Metroid games is, like, so, so crazy. And, and I gotta say, I even have a soft spot for Metroid Other M. It's a disgusting, horrible disgrace of a game, but I can still forgive it for a lot of the, a lot of the things that it tried to do. And there's, there's probably no bigger obvious nostalgia bias than when you can point out probably one of the most flawed video games ever made and say, you know what? Ain't that bad. <laughs> Not too horrible. It ain't too horrible. Um, so to be fair, fans did rag on Other M for a lot of the hate it really didn't need. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, to be fair, I feel like it might have been the fans that uh, really sank that franchise for a long time. But Oh, I was. Yeah, but man, that comeback with Samus Returns, oh my god, that game is magnificent. However, Nintendo never seems to understand how to market Metroid properly. They always just kind of like quietly push it out, and then they're surprised that it doesn't sell very well. Like, come on, like, you see what they're doing with Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem doesn't sell very well, but they are giving it so much of a push, so much marketing attention. Like, every, uh, Smash Brothers, here, 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 take more Fire Emblem. And uh, Fire Emblem gets its own mobile game, which we're going to be talking about mobile games soon. There's, like, so much that they're pushing on Fire Emblem, and it still just, like, sells okay. And then I'm thinking, like, guys, do this to Metroid. You're sitting on this amazing franchise. That's so cool. There's so much lore and story, and there's so much you can do with it. There's so much potential. And I love it so much. And they don't make anything with it. And that might be the most painful thing about my number one, is that I think it's probably the, in my opinion, the best gaming franchise that has ever existed. And the company that owns it does not know what to do with it. And they will not do anything with it. And they don't know how to market it. And they don't know why the West likes it. And they just kind of don't do anything with it. So, see... The ironic thing is, my number one is the complete opposite. I know. <laughs> like, everything you said, complete opposite. Yeah, that's funny. Well, I, except for one thing, just to tease them about what it is. I still feel like um, when that series that is your number one releases a game that just stinks... <laughs> the fans are actually, you know what? No, the fans have the complete opposite reaction. Never mind, you're right. Everything is the complete opposite. Yep. Because I was thinking of like an other M versus a blah, 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 blah game. So, uh, whatever. Take it away, Matt. Your number one favorite franchise. My number one favorite is Kingdom Hearts. So, let's talk about the opposites. Yeah. And you're like, oh, how do you pitch this game? Like, it's so hard. Mine was probably weird elevator pitch between Disney and Final Fantasy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? It's weird because, like, as a franchise, because you, you're, like I said before, at the top of this, you're not saying this as a game. You're saying this as a franchise. Yeah, I'm saying and, this as a franchise. Which is a very big <laughs> differential. And you want to talk about games that don't need to exist? I got several. <laughs> How many? Do you even have, have enough fingers? Could, I have two of them that could just be in a mo little 15-minute movie and be fine. Right. And, and wasn't um wasn't the newest uh, Kyrie-related uh, uh, like a rhythm game like, only had, like, five minutes of canon cutscene at yeah, all. Yeah, but that game's fun, so I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> well, I know you love rhythm games, too, so that that is another fix of yours that, honestly, is, like, a perfect happy medium, so I get that. But, like, um, for me, like, I'm, I, I've played some rhythm games like that. They're actually pretty satisfying, never mind. But for someone who, like, loves Kingdom Hearts but doesn't like the rhythm game, and they're like, oh, but I need to get my Kingdom Hearts fixed, so they, they plow through this, and they only get five minutes out of this. Isn't it a $60 game? Or was on launch? I think it's forty dollars. Okay, well, but still, like, yikes. But, but still, like, you still get a full game out of it. It's just if you're going for a lore right. dive, you're not going to get much lore. Exactly. And I mean, when you're in the Kingdom Hearts fan base, lore is pretty much it's it's deep. You got to do yeah. so many things. Look at so many documents. Yeah, and it, it it's weird too. But, like, but yeah. But let's get the reason why I love it mm -hmm. is just because it's like like you said, Mario. It makes me happy. Yeah. Like I mean, Disney, man. Colorful and Final happy. Fantasy. That's like your two... It's gonna be like two big happy spots right there. I like the messages in the games. Like, mm -hmm. it's just a nice game. 
And like, I love the characters. I mean, hell, how many commissions do I have on my wall of Aqua for crying out loud? <laughs> I have what? One, two, three, four. Four. four Just from what you right can now. see. Just from what I can see. <laughs> rotating around my room. But it's like, it's just, I love that game series so much because it was one of my first games I ever got on my PlayStation 2. It introduced me to J-Rock and J-Pop. So that was another drug addiction that I got addicted yeah. to. So just stick it in my arm. Yeah. Like, it wasn't always crazy. It wasn't mm-hmm. always crazy. Cra- it's just yeah, Kingdom Hearts, two. I know people nowadays probably won't believe it, but it used to be simple back then. Um, it was. No pun intended. And um, <laughs> it, it was like not nearly what it was overblown today and uh what like we were comparing it to metroid i feel like uh you know one thing i guess is similar i feel like square enix does not know what to do with kingdom hearts that might be one thing that is the same new one the new one that's going to come out is pretty much just versus 13 and him just saying you know what screw you square enix i'm making it anyway (laughs) because that's what it is but yeah like uh I, I, I know um, Kingdom Hearts 3 had a lot of issues when uh, it came out with, like, uh, uh, reception. Uh, people, well, for one, of course, this is like Duke Nukem, like we were saying. One of those games that, like, was never going to come out. And then when it finally did, inevitably it's going to let people down. But, I mean, people were just in it like, <gasps> Toy Story! Monsters, Inc! And, and then, of course, they get the game and they're like, it's okay. Yeah, it, it, here's the thing about 3. It's okay but I'm still happy to have played it and finally had that arc done. Yeah. Cause it did kind of wrap some things up and then opened like 30 more new, what the hell is going to happen now? Kind of things. That's true. One yeah. story ended 30 opened. And I was like, one of those guys who was like, Oh yeah, I played uh, kingdom hearts one. And then I get into kingdom hearts two and I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? Who's this Roxas guy? I thought uh, Sora and the others were leaving with this like letter from King Mickey or something, and and I'm like, well, what's what's even happening? And I'm like, wait a minute, you you mean I had to play this Chain of Memories and I had to like go through this Japanese mobile game that never got translated or anything? And there's all these other like canonical everything's canon in Kingdom back, Hearts. <laughs> back in the day, back in high school, when I would check khinsider.com every day. I actually, I still day. use KH Insider, but for its wealth of video game music. <laughs> I, I love it for that. But it's like, it just holds a special place for me. Because, like, I still remember, like, I got stuck on the Tarzan level in one because I didn't realize you could equip abilities and I didn't have guard. Uh... And I just kept getting shot and killed. I'm like, what are you supposed to do? You can't do anything. And then I remember talking to one of my friends and they're like, yeah, you can just use guard. I'm like, what the heck is guard? <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that reminds me that i have a lot of memories like with pokemon in particular where uh i i had some very noobish mistakes and i had no idea what was going on because i mean to be fair i'm like six or seven and i'm this is my first ever video game i've ever played well after super mario brothers which is way more straightforward than like an rpg and i couldn't figure out how to leave the house because i've never seen an overhead view in a video game i had no idea what was going on and someone showed me like Oh, well, that's a door. I'm like, that's a door? It looks like this rectangle. You walk into the rectangle, and all of a sudden, boom, you're outside. I'm like, whoa! And then, you know, I, I play far enough of the game, and like, oh, well, I gotta turn it off. And eventually, I gotta keep starting over, starting over. I'm like, man, I wish I could keep going. And then someone shows me, like, oh, well, you open, you hit start. I'm like, where's start? Oh, it's that little button down there. And you can open it up, and you could save your progress. Save? Whoa! It, I know it sounds like we're, we're joking about silly stuff like that, like guarding in Kingdom Hearts, but... It really was like that, you know, back when video games were so primal. <laughs> so primal in the days of schoolyard rumors. Yes. That would be a fun one. We should do a, we should do a cast about schoolyard, schoolyard, schoolyard rumors and video games. We pro- yeah. Yes, we got it. That would be really fun. <laughs> it would. Uh, you know what? Also, just for funsies, before we pass this up, since you stayed to the end of the episode, I have a fun little uh, extra thing for you. I asked Kim what her top five favorite franchises are, and just so that... You know, because uh, Kim is going to be joining me for an update uh, or upcoming episode of Hitbox where we cover the other side of this coin, where instead of doing top five favorite franchises, we're going to do top five favorite video games. The actual physical cartridges, discs, downloads, whatever. The actual game. What are our top five favorites? And her list is going to have some hints towards it based on her top five franchises, which I want to make sure that I include in here because it's I want to be fair to Kim because she helped me make this. Her number five is actually, Matt, on your list, 
Persona. She, uh -oh. yeah, she actually uh, played through Persona Five after um you had lent it to us. She saw me playing it. Originally, we were gonna like kind of play it together, but I got so sucked into it, I played ahead of her, and then she was like, oh, "Yeah, but I want to play it." And then she started her own file, and it just kind of blew up from there. So she is like a huge Persona fan. She absolutely loves it. Um, her number four. Neither of us mentioned this. Overcooked. <laughs> That's a fun one. It is a fun game, but I don't think I can get you to play that game for more than, like, 30 minutes to an hour. That's well, because we usually start screaming. Yeah, we start screaming, get, like, a stress headache. Uh, I got another friend of mine who is the same way. He's like, he's like, oh, I really want, I love the game. I want to play more of it, but God, I can't do it. Kim gets really into it. She loves Overcooked. Um, her number three is, and she had to correct me on this one, she, by saying Xeno. And that is including Xeno Saga and Xeno Blade because she loves the franchise and the idea of both and what they are because they really are largely the same thing. Uh, though Xeno Saga is more space exploration and more futuristic themed, and Xeno Blade is more um, like uh, I guess more I don't want to say down to earth because it really isn't because it's always on like giant titans and stuff, but it's more biologically based than you know being in space and you know all those other but it's still at heart a crazy quirky rpg series and she really really loves those uh, her number two was actually on my list and it is the witcher she has it much higher than me but maybe it's just because i've played so many other franchises that i'm like i just can't let go of these uh, but she really really loves the witcher and ironically has not played witcher one or two yet specifically two i keep nudging her to play it like this is a good game and you're not playing it uh, she's also reading the Witcher books as well, by the way. And her number one is on Matt's list as well. And it's Final Fantasy. Kim um, really fell in hard to Final Fantasy. Her first one was with Final Fantasy VII, which was not only one of the first video games she ever played, it was the first, for sure, first RPG she ever played. And she, like... If you couldn't tell from her list, loves RPGs. That was like, RPGs, oh yeah, Overcooked's fun. And that was pretty much it. She, like, really dove into uh, playing the Final Fantasy VII. She just adored that game. And then, of course, she moved on, played, uh, I know she played eight. Uh, we have nine downloaded downstairs on the Switch because she missed that one. We're going to play that later. Um, she, I told you earlier, she played ten. Love ten. Ten two uh, was a thing, and she played it, and discussion for later, maybe. Uh, I got some well, opinions on that game, once too. Once again, I'm that horrible Final Fantasy fan that liked Ten two. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, just, I need to hear that talk. It's in my core of the character of I will like every bad game. <laughs> um, I, I know she missed a few after that, but, man, she loves um the 7 remake, too. She's, like, all in on that. Absolutely loves it, but anyway... A lot of fun with that one. Um, also, another big thing we want to point out, I know it's a little late at the end of this, we are having an upcoming discussion episode of uh, Hitbox where I'm going to be exclusively answering a bunch of your guys' questions, and they're going to be tailored around certain themes. And the theme we have coming up is Metroid. So if you have any Metroid-related question that you would like to pose to me to answer, and it could be literally anything, I have a whole video on that you can check out on the YouTube channel. Um, just let me know down in the comments of that video or on uh, Twitter. You can also send it there or in discord the links for that are in the description of the youtube video but for now thank you all for tuning into this episode of hitbox if you enjoy the show you can help us keep it alive by supporting us on patreon with the links in the show notes and this video's description for those of you on youtube remember to like the video and subscribe for more and be sure to let us know what you thought of the show and what other topics you'd like to hear us cover in the future special thanks to our editor rowan our coordinator jaime and backup dancer slash shady maintenance guy jeremy and of course to all of our amazing patreon members See you. Bye.